Merry Christmas. I am so glad to see all of you here this evening for this very special Christmas Eve service. I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to share my first Christmas with you here at Covenant. Uh, by a quick show of hands, how many of you feel like you had to run a dead sprint just to get to the seat that you're in right now? Yeah, me too. I have been running around this place all over this building all day, and so many others have as well, and I'm just so glad to finally be here. So here's what I thought we could do at the very beginning, is if you have been running and wrapping and prepping and planning, let's just take a minute and take a deep breath and be glad that we're here. Let's Oh, isn't that better? Welcome home. Welcome home. Covenant is an accepting, uh, can I say this? Covenant is an accepting, welcoming community, sharing the glory of God's love with all. For those of you who I have not met, my name is Joel Esla. I am now the pastor here, have been for almost a year, and uh, so glad to be able to share this service with you. Some of you uh, may not be aware that our media specialist, Brian Biller, came down with COVID this week. And so he has been uh, guiding me and, and uh, many others along so that we can still do this service without him being here. And what that means is that we are not currently live streaming this service. And for those of you parents and grandparents and those of you students who've been working so hard and you wanted the service recorded, we are trying our best to do exactly that. Uh, we're not live streaming, we're trying to record the service in the hopes that if we're doing this right, that we'll be able to edit it and share it with you all next week. So we can keep that in the back of our minds and prayers that, Lord, may this recording without Brian here uh, go well so that we can share this service, uh, not just for those of you who are here right now, uh, but later on as well. Thank you all for wearing your masks. Look at all of you. That's so good. We, uh, it's so important that we do that uh, all the time, but especially in this wave uh, of Omicron. So thank you for honoring that here this evening. Uh, this evening's offering uh, goes 100% towards the deacons. The deacons, if you know them, you know they do all kinds of great work, both with the members of this church as well as all the outreach that they do. And so uh, they're not funded at all through our normal budget. They're funded through everything that's collected tonight as well as on Monday, Thursday. And so uh, any gifts that you give will go to all of their ministry, and uh, it sure is a good one. Um, if you wouldn't mind filling out the attendance pads at the end of the pews and passing them on down, we'd really, really appreciate it. And I think that we should get to what we're here to do, which is to start this Christmas Eve worship. So thank you. Thank you for joining us.
In God's house, there is hope, for God loves us too much to leave us just as we are. In God's house, there is peace, for all that separates us from God falls away. In God's house, there is joy, because God created music and coffee and dance floors and laughter that is contagious and endless rounds of peekaboos with babies. And if those things have God's fingerprints, then God's house surely exudes joy. In God's house, there is love because God is love from start to finish and that love exists for us all. And at the center of our hope. In the center of our peace. In the center of our joy. In the center of our love is God, who came to this earth to dwell among us. So tonight we light the Christ candle, for God's love could, just could not stay away. Welcome home. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join us in the call to worship. An unmarried teenage girl was invited to Christ into this world. An ordinary carpenter was invited to be a father to a child unlike any other. The shepherds were invited. The Magi were invited. Foreigners and seekers, included at the manger. And if she was invited, and he was invited, and they were invited. Then we need trust that we too are invited. This story is for us. This love is for us. Family of faith, this is our invitation. Welcome home. Joy. 
seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Beautiful and loving God, on this special night, we know that you love us. Even when we do things that make you sad, we are sorry for all the wrongs that we are unkind to our brothers and sisters. We are sorry for not listening to our grown-ups and for whining about what we don't have. Help us to be kinder and more patient and more loving all the time, just the way you taught us to be. Amen. God loves us all. There is nothing we do that makes God love us, and there is nothing we can do to make God stop loving us. God loves us for everyone all the time, no matter what. Holy God, we've heard this story a million times. Mary and Joseph, the angels, the shepherds. We've heard it a million times, but we want to hear it, it like it's the first. So move among us, circle back, draw close, crack open our hearts and fill them with your goodness. Help us to hear what it is you might be saying to us with curiosity, joy, and hope. This is an invitation. Come be here with us, gratefully we pray. Amen. Joseph and Mary were expecting a child very soon, but they had to go to Bethlehem. There was no good place for them to stay the night, but the baby was coming, so they went into where the Animals were, and it was morning.
gave birth to Jesus. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And laid him in the manger. In that place where the shepherds living in shepherds living in the field kept watch over their flock by night, then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David our, David our Savior, who is Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there with the, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to God's people on earth.
Please be seated. The shepherds, are, the shepherds returned, thanking God and loving God because of this new baby. They just couldn't be quiet about this wonderful new life in the world. They just had to praise God. Magi, wise people from far away had heard that a special child was coming. They followed a star to find a child, and they saw that the star had stopped over the place where the baby was. When they saw this, they were overwhelmed with joy. When the Magi saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and paid him honor and respect. Opening their treasure chest, they gave this newborn king gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
the Savior of the world has come. His name is Jesus. 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 seated. One day, I wasn't planning on preaching from the pulpit, but with all of you right there, I think I probably should, so I'm not too close. I don't want to stay as safe as we can. One day, I'll get to uh, preach without having to get my mask disconnected from my face, but this is not, not here yet. Uh, welcome, welcome home. Welcome home. The whole theme here tonight, invited home. You've all received your invitation and you are here and we are so glad that you are here. Home is a complex and powerful word. It's something that we all long for. It's something that we all, in one way or another, are looking for, and home is more than a building. It's more than a group of people. Home is about being welcomed by a community with our whole selves, being able to show up with people around us with our whole selves and being loved and accepted just as we are. That's what home is supposed to be, and I think if we're blessed, we get to have glimpses of that, but maybe if we're really honest, we don't always feel that all the time. That there are times where the people around us aren't able to love us the way that we need to be loved, whether that's people close to us, whether that's a church. And so to come home and be met with love and acceptance is a gift that every one of us deserves. And I don't know about you, but I love coming home and having someone jump up and down. They are so excited to see me. It's as though it's the greatest day this person has ever had in their life. And of course, that's my dog. <laughs> and, and then she'll do the same thing all over again the next day as though it is the greatest moment of her life when I come through the doors. That is the kind of greeting that we all deserve when we come home. And of course, not all of us are able to receive it, at least not all of the time. And so coming home, this word home, it means so much to us and it can elicit gratitude, gratitude for when we are greeted and accepted just as we are. And it can also bring about sadness and grief because 
we don't always receive that kind of acceptance. Tonight we are celebrating, of course, the birth of Jesus. And there's really only one thing that I want to say about the birth of Christ tonight. And it's this, that God loves things by becoming them. You guys want to say that with me? God loves things by becoming them. Let's say it together. God loves things by becoming them. Now, I didn't come up with this idea. This is from a, a writer named Richard Rohr. But let that sink in tonight, that God loves things by becoming them. And Christmas is all about God becoming you and me. That God is born into this world, in and through this child that we call Jesus. And somehow in this person, Jesus the Christ, God and humanity are held together as one. And God loves things by becoming them. And in the birth of Jesus, God becomes human. God becomes you and me so that God might better love you. And if that's not the most dignifying thing you've ever heard in your life, I'd love to know what is. That God loved you enough to become just like you. I want to offer two real simple observations about this Christmas story that we've heard, like we said in the prayer, a million times. And these may not be new observations to you, but I hope that they bring you some good tidings of great joy. The first thing I want to say about this Christmas story is that Jesus is born into our real, imperfect world. And that's exactly where God meets us. That Jesus is born into a world, and it's not all set up just ready for him as though everybody's there to celebrate him. Right? Imagine how difficult it must have been for Mary and Joseph to have to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem 80 miles. That wasn't in their birthing plan, but God met them there nonetheless. I think that our idealized images of Christmas, whether those idealized images are of what it was like 2,000 years ago or what it's going to be like tonight or tomorrow with family and friends, I don't know that they serve us very well. Now, I love that song, Away in a Manger, but can we really believe that Jesus as a baby didn't cry? No crying he made. Well, of course he cried. Have any of you ever met a baby that hasn't cried and cried a lot? And do we really think that the baby Jesus didn't poop? Of course he did. Of course he did. Because God meets us in the real world, not in some idealized image that none of us can measure up to. That's true for Jesus 2,000 years ago, and it's true for us as well. Do we really think that we're going to have family gatherings where there aren't going to be moments where people are walking on eggshells and maybe people's feelings get hurt sometimes? Of course they will. And that's exactly where God meets us, not in some perfect Christmas card image, but exactly as we are. I think that last year's Christmas and this year's Christmas, with all of the disruption that COVID has provided us, actually brings us closer to the first Christmas with all of its disruption, which is why we don't like it. <laughs> we, we want our Christmas to be picture perfect, but God doesn't meet us in ideals. God meets us in the real world, imperfect as it is, and loves us there. So if any of you are not having the perfect Christmas this year, then I've got good news for you. That's exactly where God is bringing about grace and light and life into your life, that you might discover yourself to be loved exactly as you are, the real you, not the one that you want other people to think you are, but the one you actually are. And the second thing I want to observe about Christmas one is that Jesus is born into our real world, imperfect as it is, and that's where God meets us. And the second thing I want to say about Christmas is what the, that angel said to those shepherds. We heard it read earlier. We hear it every year, and it's so easy to move past it, which is this most basic truth about what it means to be a Christian. The angel said to the shepherds, don't be afraid. I have good news for you, wonderful, joyous News for all people, your Savior is born today. He is Christ the Lord. 
The birth of Jesus into this world is unambiguously good news for everybody. Everybody. That's why we call it gospel, because it's good news, not just for some people who believe the right things or go to the right church or go to the right school or live in the right community. No, it is good news for everybody, all people. So who do you think fits into the category of all people? Wait, everybody? So do you think Christians, it's good news for Christians that Jesus is born? I think so. What about for people who aren't Christians? Is it good news for them that Christ is born? Of course it is. Of course it is. It doesn't matter who you are, where you live, what you look like, or who you love. The birth of Christ is good news for all people. And because of that, we don't have to be afraid, just like the angel said. God loves things by becoming them. And God became you to love you. And if that's who God really is, then there is no reason to fear. First chapter of the Gospel of John talks about the birth of Christ this way. It says, the word became flesh and made a home among us. That's John's fancy way of saying that when Christ is born into this world, this was God making God's home among us. That God has made God's home in our midst by becoming you by becoming me, so that we might find our home together right here and now in this real imperfect world, that we all might discover ourselves to be loved and invited exactly as we are. And so if your heart tonight is filled with gratitude this Christmas, or if you are filled with grief, or if it is a mixture of both, God has taken up residence in you just to be close to you, just to be near enough to you to whisper into your ear that you are exactly what God had in mind when God made you. No matter what anybody else ever tells you, no matter what you say to yourself, you belong here. This is your home, and this is your life, and all of it is a gift. God loves things by becoming them, and God has become one of us. God has taken up residence in you, which means that no matter where you are, that's exactly where you belong. So this night, we are reminded that God invites us home to the life that we have, that we might find ourselves to be loved exactly as we are. A. Will you pray with me, please? Holy God, in this moment, surrounded by community, in the presence of candlelight and alleluias, we bow our heads and give thanks. Thank you, God, for the places and people that feel like home. Thank you for the hope on the horizon which carries us through. Thank you for the joy of children on this night which reminds us of love. And thank you for the stars and the sky which remind us of you. We have so much to be grateful for. However, even amidst our prayers of gratitude and joy, we also bring you prayers of concern. For when the music is quiet and the clouds clear, we can finally hear our own thoughts and see sky above us. And that is when there is enough space for hurt to float to the surface. We know we are close to home, God, but we also know we are not home yet, and that truth aches in us. We are closer to home, but we're not there yet. We are only truly home when we are with you. So God of starlight and angel choruses, on this Christmas Eve, as you come, dwell among us. We pray that you would bring us closer to home. Scoop us up, draw us in, Build the world you have in mind for us. Hover here. Hear our prayers. Take this grief and pain off of our shoulders and hold our hands as we walk through the dark. 
It is almost Christmas. It's almost here. We can feel it. We are close to home. So together with hope in our hearts, we pray the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Jesus was not born in a real home. He was born into simplicity. He was born into a manger in Bethlehem. And despite the little he might have had, Jesus still spent the rest of his days on earth giving to others. Generosity is in the heart of our faith. We give what we can, not because we should or because scripture says to. We give because we're family. We give because we belong to one another. We give because all are invited into God's house. So let us give our offerings now knowing that all we give tonight goes to our Christmas joy offering so the deacons can continue their work of caring for others. Gracious God, your story is one that forever invites us to be our full selves, to take up space, to go where we feel called, and to allow this community to feel like home. So use these gifts to keep building your home here, with gratitude as tall as the ceiling. We pray. Amen. Please be seated. shepherds made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at the shepherds told them but Mary treasured these words and pampered them in her heart As a reminder for those of you who are out of practice on how we do this candle thing on Christmas Eve or those perhaps this is new to you, we take the lit candle and once your candle is lit, you keep that held upright and the person who's next to you, they turn their candle towards yours, you don't turn the lit candle towards them. I think we understand why, but it's perhaps been a little while, so just a reminder towards safety.
as you go from this place, go with deep gratitude in all of our hearts for those of you who shared and led us tonight in song and in music and in reading and in prayers. We thank every one of you. And as you go from this place, remember that God loves things by becoming them and God became one of us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.